welcome to the End User Tools Presents Spotted Lanternfly Egg Mass Treatments Data Collection using ArcGIS Field Maps, which is the mobile application. I'm Jenny Sauer. I am a mobile solutions specialist with the End User Tools group, and I'm going to take you through data collection using that mobile application today. A couple things I want to show you right off the bat. I'm just going to share this web browser with you and I'm going to place these two links that I'm going to walk through in the chat box for you for your reference. This first link here is the mobile data collection tools web page. This is a public facing APHIS web page. So accessible from any web browser at any time of the day by any person public or, or in internal, external, anyone, state cooperators, everyone has access to this site. Hopefully you know about it and have it bookmarked, but if not, please do so. All of our documents, recorded training, and schedules of future training show up on this site. So just to scroll down a little bit and give you the view, the top half is mostly document related. The training events page will give you links to join training events general doc documentation. There is training here on field maps that you can find, a user guide. And under pest program specific training documents, if you scroll down a bit, there's spotted lanternfly. And here is egg mass treatments. There is a user manual and a quick reference, just one page, like a little cheat sheet for the field, if you will. And going back one, if we scroll to the bottom of this page, we have a video gallery. And we've archived all of the last year's 2022 video trainings. You can see that there's um, a, a good amount of trainings here from last year for you to reference, including some for Spotted Lanternfly. They're alphabetized here. Um, and the training here today is being recorded and will show up in a new category or could be searched for in this little box here. Um, for pest program trainings for this year. So this training is going to count as the first of its kind for 2023. So we're kind of bro broaching into the new year already, so to speak. The second link I gave you is for a training quiz. And I give you this link at the beginning because it's really not meant to bring pressure or, or cause worry, but as like a little knowledge check for you. And I'm okay with you opening that and doing it along the way as we talk today, if that's something you wanna do. This training quiz, when you submit it, will also give you an automated email response that will say you completed this training. So that might be something that's useful to you. Maybe you want that on your list of accomplishments that you submit to your supervisor. Maybe your supervisor wants to know that you did get something out of this training and you have that email there. And it does me a little favor too. It just lets me know that I got across the points that I meant to in this little session here together today. So it'll do me a little favor as well. So please do take that quiz. Welcome to have it open now. So those two links, I just wanted to make sure you had at your disposal right now. What should you expect today? I've got this kind of like, you know, a quick analogy of what to expect of this training today. You're probably a lot higher up in these steps than this guy is. And we're going towards the goal of being able to collect data at the top. That would be this little prize that you're going for. But there's a lot of foundational training that you either should already have in your belt or, or really acquire quickly and soon before you go out there to collect data for SLF egg mass treatments. Um, survey protocol for one having a device and feeling pretty confident using that device. I had a poll up. I'm going to go ahead and give you a few more minutes to complete. For those of you who haven't, I see about eight of you left that might want to complete that poll. Probably the options are an iPhone, maybe an iPad, maybe another device out in the field. But I'd love to see what kind of devices you're using out there. You want to be sure you're comfortable with that device. You also want to be comfortable with the mobile app itself, which is the ArcGIS Field Maps application. And I can help with some of that along the way, but not everything. The ArcGIS Field Maps application, as I just showed you on that mobile data collection website, has a video series of 10 videos and a user guide. So you can use those videos and step yourself through kind of making sure that you do understand how to enter data in that mobile application itself. As far as survey protocol, you've got your SLF multi-state coordinator, that's Matthew Travis, who's responsible for communicating survey protocol requirements. 
And this training today is your little quick stop to make sure you understand how to use the application as it was designed. You also have Erica Wiley, who has taken the lead in documenting how to use these apps and apply survey protocol as your SLF data coordinator. This is kind of a neat little picture that I discovered along the way. <clears throat> um, we all know these like hillside pathways that, that animals make. Sometimes it's called a deer path. In a situation like this, this is sometimes referred to as a desire path. And I just love that phrase because of course, like your desire is to take an easier route or a more pleasant route to some means to the end. And you can see here, there's a path that kind of goes around and this little desire path that's come right through the grass and it's formed by many people taking it and just wearing away at the ground. And I just want to give a little warning here that there are two big desire paths to data entry with this SLF program. And I'm here to sort of beg you to take the path officially laid out rather than a shortcut you may desire. And just to start it off by giving you the hint at those two desire paths that you might be tempted to take, Especially with those of you using an iPhone, I see more than half of you are using an iPhone. iPads are not usually equipped with a data plan and iPhones most definitely by standard are. And so the tendency is to use an iPhone and use it in a live or connected mode. And the desire would be to do that because it's easy and it's already there. I'm here to tell you, please, not to take that desired path, but to use the disconnected workflow. Do not connect data from a device directly live and collect data. Um, but I'm here to ask you to please don't do that. I'm going to give it a little X across there. Stay on the path that's been designed by the by the app itself. And secondly, there is a layer for monitoring points that is required to have both the point itself entered and a second data entry of an activity, a first activity of establishment or treatment. We're gonna talk a little bit about that layer because it is an optional layer right now, but please, if you are instructing a state cooperator or someone to take advantage of that monitor point layer, please be pay attention to the fact that there are two first initial data entries. So the two desire paths that I don't want you to take, please use that disconnected workflow. Don't take the easier, maybe simpler, maybe faster initially route and, and kind of walk that desired path. And please pay attention to the first entry if you're making use of that monitor point layer. So I've harped enough on that. Let's talk about what we're gonna talk about. I'm going to just cover a little bit on the Field Maps app, how to sign in, and some of the some of the resources there. Um, we're going to talk about that disconnected workflow, give you a little overview of that. Then we're just going to dive into the two layers already mentioned in this egg mass treatments um, application and look at those data forms. And I have my iPad and my iPhone here. I've got kind of an older iPhone. Um, I'm due for a, an update, so forgive that, but it works in the same way. And I can show you on both of those what that looks like um, in real time. And then I've got finally just kind of a list of, hopefully I've already discussed them along the way, but just a quick list of reminders to watch out for. So that's what we'll look at today together. Jump into field maps. As, as described, field maps is specifically designed for disconnected work flows in the field. It is designed to collect data out in rural communities in any kind of scenario out in the field and then be synced back to a data source later. There is a user guide and there is, as I mentioned, a video series that sh you should have completed as a maybe a prerequisite of this course. If you haven't, please do so. Even if you have last year, and some of you probably used this application last year, I still would recommend just a quick review, um, especially just to be sure that you, you still know all the ways that Field Maps works. It's just a good practical way to make use of those resources that you have. Signing into Field Maps. When you first open Field Maps, you kind of get this view. You've got the option to sign in with ArcGIS Online and or to sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. And here, PPQ, all of our PEST programs have sensitive data. We will sign in using the ArcGIS Enterprise. That is the FedRAMP moderate protected um, portal that's managed by our USDA MRP 
um, group and that is the proper place for us to sign in. So you're going to tap that sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise and then you'll get a little pop up that looks sort of like this. The first time you sign in, you will only see the bottom two options to specify a new URL or to scan a code. And you're going to choose specify a new URL. And again, the first time you won't have this option up above, you won't see this URL here up above. So you will manually carefully type that in using the keyboard on your device. And then the next time you sign in, you'll get what you're seeing here, which I've got the option to just choose that URL. So this little URL here is our official USDA MRP enterprise portal. That is the correct URL to officially sign into and access these maps. So the second time through, pretty easy. And then you just start tapping that URL. Previously, we were using um, a stage portal for training. And hopefully, we'll go back to this. But we always create an official map and a training version of that map. And the training version is usually held on a different portal. And you can see maybe the difference here. I'll try to give you some little boxes. But this is the official URL, which we just saw on sign in. And this is what you would use to sign into the stage portal. You see that STG is a little bit different. And that's where you would find the training version of that map. We had an update to stage. And so for egg mass treatments, we had to put the training map also in our official portal. So both the training and official data collection maps are held up here in our official maps.mrp URL. So the warning here because of that is to be very, very careful that data that is just play data or you're just practicing or like today I'm going to use a training map is really only play data, that no real official data is put in a training map and then vice versa, no training or play data is put in an official map. So you got to make sure that you're in the right map when you're collecting official data and vice versa. And one way that you can tell is the maps title. So the maps title for a training map begins with all capitals training. And I will show you that here today as well. But that is an important thing to be sure of. Also, because it is not actually officially okayed or approved to put training or testing in our official enterprise portal, we have to only allow that training map to exist in that portal for a specified amount of time. And I've been told that they would like to remove access to that training map after tomorrow. So today is Thursday the 1st, that would be tomorrow the 2nd. If there is a reason to extend that, please reach out to Erica or uh, Matthew Travis and request that for longer. But in order to protect the real data being entered, that training map is going to disappear starting next week. So just a warning, be really careful in the next couple of days. We really like you to have that training version because it's a great way to just kind of play around. And uh, it definitely allows me to do training really freely too. But just be aware, um, be careful which map you're in and just know that training map is going to go away from access and kind of protect the data, the real data being entered. The disconnected mode workflow. As mentioned before, this is one of those please resist the desire to collect data while connected. Remember, stay on the path, kind of like we're on a roller coaster here of data collection, arms and, arms and hands in idea. And some of the reasoning is that while staying connected, one of our biggest problems with making sure that the data is, is synchronizing from your device back to that portal server an interruption of that process is our biggest issue for that happening correctly. And your phone is going to try to ping all kinds of sources and do a good job of that. And it's an excellent device for something like that. But even in an urban setting, walking between buildings, we know that can interrupt that kind of thing. So we want to make sure that we are avoiding an issue where you may lose, lose that synchronization from your device to our portal. And secondly, uh, devices pinging that server. So every time you're using this map while live and connected, you are pinging a server. So it's putting unnecessary pressure and load on a server. And it's just a better process for us, especially since this application was really specifically designed to operate in disconnected mode. And so the process there involves some office prep. And that's that little, this is our red box here. You have to, while connected to a reliable Wi-Fi, 
download a map area, the area that you are interested in collecting data for. And then once that map area is there, you can disconnect from Wi-Fi. There is a list of parking lot tests that are recommended in the user manual. Go out to the parking lot, make sure you have that map, that you have it's working correctly. Head out to the field, collect data to your heart's content. And then at the end of every day, connect back to that Wi-Fi that you have confidence in, synchronize the data. I added charge the device, probably a good daily thing that you already do, but put those those steps of connecting to Wi-Fi and synchronizing that data in your hands with your decision making instead of the device attempting to do that on its own. The data layer. So I've added this slide just to make sure that we're aware of the layers that are available. And as I mentioned, there is an egg mass monitor points 2023 and an egg mass treatment areas 2023. And as I understand it, the egg mass monitoring points and its associated activities table to update those mo that monitored point. This year is not required by the program. I've been informed that it's been put there if the state wants to monitor themselves. And so I will go through the process of using this layer um, in, in, in order for you to support your states who might wanna use it, but it is not required by the program. And that was the second desire path I want you to avoid or please stay on the path kind of scenario because it does involve first placing a, a monitor point and a second data entry of establishing that as the first activity. So I will show you that, um, but we will focus more on this AGMAS treatment areas layer. And I know Erica may not be able to unmute, but Erica, I just want to give a moment if there's anything you want to type in the chat or if you are able to unmute, if you need to clarify or if you could just confirm I was on track. Hi, Jenny, you're you're right on track. Um, so just to reiterate, last year there was the push to monitor the egg masses um, instead of egg, egg mass monitoring points. Um, and it was for... Uh, research this year, it's not required. We're not, um, if you put the data in, it's really for um, you and your state to understand your population and your treatments. It's not, we're not going to be pulling the data and like, like putting together a report that would be like, a, we could do that if the state require, if the state wants to do that, but it's not like, it's not going to be a workflow type of thing. Thank you, Erica. I always need backup because this is, as I said from the start, survey protocol is not my arena, so I hate to step too far into it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're doing great. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to dive into this egg mass monitor points first as a layer to consider. Um, again, I'm driving it home as let's please do the, the approved process. I know this may or may not affect you, but please be sure that you are taking those two steps that you are entering the data as a, as a point and then entering also an activity. So again, I'm going to give you one more visual. First, we're placing a push pin. Secondly, the activity. So I'm, I'm just going to give you a view of my iPad and let's have a look at what that looks like. So this is my PBQ iPad. As you can see, I have all my um, field applications sitting here. I also have here my um, iPhone handy. So I will show you a view of that if I can too here and there. But I just want to give you the iPad view because it's bigger um, for our purposes here today. So I'm going to open field maps. I was already signed in earlier today to our enterprise portal. And so it's opening me all the way up into the map I was in earlier, which is appropriate. But I'm going to go back two times to the main menu. And you can see I've got the current map here. I have maps on my device, my maps, and then groups. And probably you will not have all these groups I have. I belong to a ton of groups. That's just the nature of, of my um, position. But you can see the SLF groups here. The other easier way, especially for me, is simply to use this search bar. And I can go SLF if I want. And then maybe just type egg. And you can see it narrows it, right? Keeps narrowing everything that's been shared with me related to egg mass treatments. And right here on the top, I've got the training map, which is what we want. So I'm looking for this one that says training in all caps along the top. Training 
PPQ SLF egg mass treatments 2023 field map. It's also telling me right here on this map card that I have offline areas. That's what I want to use. And then I have one local edit, like I have an edit sitting on my device that I have not yet synchronized back to that portal. So I'm going to tap this map card. This is the one I want. And this is the online map here in the middle. And so I always have access to that full map. And in order to create an offline map area, I can just tap the three dots there, add offline area. And you can see I've actually already added two offline areas. That's what these two here are. One I renamed to be Colorado and one I renamed to say PA so that I know the two differences. I can see that I have the one local edit in the PA map area. And if I wanted to, I could right from here decide to sync that. I'm not going to. I want to keep things simple for what I'm asking of this device right now and not mess up my demo. But that is something I can see just right here on, on the screen. So because I am in Colorado, I'm going to open this so that you can see what that looks like. So I'm just going to tap on that offline map area. And normally I would want to disconnect from Wi-Fi. I am connected to Wi-Fi, but I'm not going to use Wi-Fi to collect data live. I'm in an offline map area. And even in the map itself, I have some signs of that. For one thing, this is my renamed map area. This is not the name of the map. It doesn't say training anymore. This is what I named this area. It says street in Colorado. So I know this is a map I downloaded. And Right here, we got these two arrows, one coming in and one going out. That is your sync button. And that button does not appear except for on an offline map area. And something I want to show you on this button, this is how I would go ahead and sync now if I had pending edits. This auto sync here also is off. And I want that to be off. If I turn it on and I'm connected to Wi-Fi, my device is going to try as you can see, it's telling me in 15 minutes, but it's going to try when it has a good, when it believes it has a good Wi-Fi connection to go ahead and sync my data. And it, for you all out in the field, you're going to end up with a pretty good list here. So it may actually successfully sync one or two and then have a problem and, and then we'll have that interrupted sync issue that I'm talking about that's so common. So be sure this is toggled to off. So that's really important. And the next little button up here looks like kind of a stack of papers. This is your layers menu. And this might look familiar from that slide a little bit earlier. These are the layers available to you. And you can see all the layers are enabled or turned on. And when all of the layers are turned on, you can collect data on them and view them. And another one over here in this three dot, or sometimes they call it the overflow menu, um, there's a legend. So with those layers enabled, the legend is going to show me what is symbolized on both on all of the enabled layers. So you can see we've got the egg mass monitor points layer that we're talking about right now. All these push pin colors are optional. And then the egg mass treatment areas is going to show up as like little hash marks. And you can see examples of me testing that out on the map as well. So that legend can be really handy for you. And then lastly, in this little three dot menu, you can open or enable the markup layer. I'm going to do that and show you a couple of things. Um, this little plus button will add points on where you are. You can draw things on the map, maybe a circle, an area, and you can make notes or add labels that might be helpful to you. And in order to clear it, I could clear all clear all markup there. See, I've erased it all. I could also maybe decide, hmm, do I want to add that and keep it? I can um, move it around. I can do all kinds of things with it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear all. And I just want to give you two caveats, two warnings on the markup layer. The markup layer is a default to feature to the field maps application. It's meant to be a handy little tool for you to kind of make notes for yourself. So number one, it is a note only you can see on your device. It's held on the device and, and pretty difficult to share. You could take screenshots and things like that. But just know that it is automatically your notes. And secondly, not an official data layer. So because it's not an official data layer, be really careful that any notes you might have made 
really should have been in the data form, maybe in a comments field. So just remember those two things. If you find ways that that markup layer is helpful, great. Just be aware, not an official data layer. Don't put important information there. And secondly, that it is like a secret diary for yourself. It's your notes only for you. So they do, it's not easily shared, even if you wanted to. Okay, so we've talked about what we're seeing on the screen here, but let's actually try to enter some data. So you're at a site and you would like to enter a monitor point. You know that you have two steps to this. The first step is to place that point. And for the sake of this, I'm gonna pull, a, well, no, what we'll do first is we're gonna add the point. So we'll say add, and we're gonna tap this add button. And that's gonna give us, because we have both layers enabled, a choice between those two layers. Nope, we're entering a monitor point. So we're gonna tap this layer, monitor points, which opens that data form. And the data form itself has some things built in for you here. There are options for you, um, like the push pin color, you, you tip, uh, tap that little area and you've got the list of colors to choose from. Again, no survey protocol being used or implemented here. I'm totally unaware. So I'm just gonna pick things. <clears throat> it also tells us things that are required by giving us a little asterisk. So some of these fields are required. If not required, you won't see that asterisk. There's a default value I see here, the treatment agency. If you need to change that, go ahead and do it. I'm gonna say I'm a state cooperator. That's how I change that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in a little ID, which won't make any sense, but I think I'm on the fourth point I've tried out. I'm going to use this hint that says first and last name and follow that instruction. All right, Jenny is first, Sour is second. I'm going to hit done, application method. I'm going to scroll through this and decide that now I am aware that there is a built in kind of contingency here. So if I pick something else, fine. But if I pick scraped, and then on the active ingredient, I think pick none, something changes. Is that right, Erica, or is it another spot? It's on the um, treatment areas, not the points. Oh, okay. So this one doesn't have that. Well, I'll remember to show that on the other one. So I've made my picks and I'm okay with that here. I'm going to put test because I just like to do that on a training test point. I want to make sure that everyone knows no matter what, this is not real data. The real tricky field on this one then is the treatment date. This this one gets me every, one, every time, guys. So if it's a personal problem, I, I apologize. But you tap this field and it opens a calendar and sometimes I leave that calendar open and I'll be scrolling around and you know kind of tap a tap of a field or maybe I've gone back a month just to check the date like was I there that day or what happened and so now I've messed up my date and and maybe unaware in order to bring the date back to today there is this today button so obvious right um, and then the other thing that I like to do is okay I've checked that date it's right I close that up by tapping the field again, and then that closes that calendar out and keeps me from kind of think, you know, setting my finger somewhere that it shouldn't be. Um, and that's it for that form. So then I would go to the top, just confirm that all of my entries made some sense. Um, okay, I feel good about it. Uh, it will place the point right in the crosshairs of this GPS little indicator here. And that's gonna make it hard for you to see it because that's where I am and I'm not moving. So I'm gonna move it away just so that you can see that point get placed. And I'm gonna hit add point and then move away. So you can see there I've added that point and remember the push pin was multicolor. Um, so that's what that color looks like there. And then my last step after being really sure about the point and all, everything on that data form is to go ahead and submit. And now we have this data form just in view form open. That little point on the map has been selected and something changed here in this sync button. Now we have a little dot on the arrow going out and that's your first indicator. There's some data that now is living on my device that needs to be synchronized out. So it gives you a little indicator there too. Uh, so that's one step, right? Remember we have to place the pin and we did. And then the second step is to add an activity, the initial activity of being established there. And the way that you do that would be to select that pin, that symbol on the map, and it's already selected. So what I'm gonna do is deselect it. So let's say you were, uh, you know, 
not selected in that way. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select it by tapping that symbol on the map. And I'd want to just confirm that that is the right one. Probably I would use the push pin ID to identify that that is the correct symbol that I want to add that activity to. And then my next step would be to look for that activities table. And it is symbolized right away by this little link icon. Or if you scroll to the bottom of that data form, there's that activity table there followed by the link icon. So it is the egg mass monitor activities 2023. So I'm just going to tap that to open that table. You can see, of course, there's no activities previous to today. And we're going to go ahead and add one. And then that opens an activity form. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fill this out according to what to survey protocol and the instructions here. There's my name. Agency. Well, previously I said state cooperator. I'm going to go ahead and change that. Monitor activity. And the first activity is supposed to be establishment treatment. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, this is going to make absolutely no sense because, again, I don't know survey protocol. But when you have fields that follow each other that are going to require the keyboard, a cool little tip is the keyboard will just give you a next. So you don't have to close, open, close, open. I can go ahead and tap next. And it just pops down to the next one. And I'm just going to number next activity comments. I'm going to make sure and say this is a test. Next, we've got activity date. Again, this is the one that gets me every time. I apologize. You're probably pros at this. Um, if I put the wrong date in, I can hit today and then I can close that up. And then I'm going to go to the top, make sure everything looks good. You can see at the top here, which I'm not going to use today, but you can add an attachment. You can take a photo. And if you tap take photo, you're probably going to be prompted to allow the to allow access to your camera. And then you can take a photo and attach that. So I'm all happy with this form. Everything looks like I think it's supposed to. And then I'm going to go ahead and tap submit. So that is our one, two for establishing that first visit, placing the pin and the first activity, which is establishment treatment. Now, let's say that I needed to edit something here. And I just, since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of all of this. But let's say I had a point earlier and I realized I did not change it to state cooperator or maybe vice versa. And I just want to check it. So in order to just have a view of that data, I can go ahead and scroll in on another point, select it. You can see it's like, are you sure you want that point or is it this area? So I've got a little list here. This test 02, that's the point I want. I'm going to check to make sure maybe using the push, push pin ID. Yep, this is the one. And if I need to edit it, which in the scenario I just gave you, maybe I do. This treatment agency, maybe I want that to be state cooperator instead. I have two options similar to the um, activities table. I've got a little editing pencil. We all know that to be the editing icon. Or I can scroll up a little bit to find edit here and, and go ahead and tap edit which opens that data form up to editing now instead of view. So this would allow you then to say, OK, the treatment agency really should be state cooperator. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to update the point. I'm going to hit submit. So that is how we might edit. Now we're in the training map, so we, <clears throat> we also have the ability to, to delete the point. This is meant to let you play around and move with things. I'm going to say that you do not have that ability to delete in the official map. That's not typical. It is typical in training maps just to let you kind of, you know, use those options. And um, in this training map, you also can replace the point. So we had the ability when I updated the point, I could have moved it and updated the location of the point. So if I hit edit again and I decide this point should have been at this corner. I can update the point. You see it jump right up there and submit that. So I can relocate the point. Um, we'll look at this with areas a little bit too on how to edit. Some of that is limited in your official data collection. It's expected that you're being more careful with how you place these things. And that would be something you'd go to your GIS specialist or maybe just go straight to Erica. She's always a good resource if something needs to be changed with the way the data is being collected. 
So that is our first layer. So just remember, in this case, stay on the path with your state cooperators. If they choose to monitor things this way, it's two data entries on the first visit. Then every visit to follow is just an activity. Um, and probably would be something more along the lines of the other two options, um, which in this case, the other two options, just to remind you, were monitor or remove pen. So um, those are just probably you come through and monitor. Um, but just remember that first visit, push pin placement and activity. So just to reiterate, I know I'm hitting it hard, but um, that first layer, place the push pin enter the activity as establishment treatment, and then all future visits are just that activity uh, of probably monitor, maybe remove pin. All right, we got that enough. Um, so secondly, the second layer that you have available that you'll probably be making most use of is the egg mass treatment areas. So I'm gonna skip back to the iPad view, click done on that and cancel and close everything out here. And in order to enter a treatment area, this is very similarly done. Again, remember on my layers menu, I have both layers visible. So when I go ahead and tap this plus button, it's going to give me the option between the two layers. What's gonna happen with the area entry is you're going to draw the perimeter of that area by establishing the points of each corner of that perimeter. So I really recommend that you are in place for where you're gonna start drawing drawing that um, area. I'm gonna say that, you know, maybe, maybe we'll try for this area. It's gonna try to, the second I hit that plus button, use my GPS location. And so that's why I would recommend you get to that first spot in order to draw this in the easiest way. So I'll just show you what happens. I'm gonna hit plus or add. And we're going to choose this areas layer. That's what we want to do. As you see, it jumped right back. Here I am in my basement at my house, jumped right back to where I am located. And it's not doing a really great job, but just so you know, I'm in my basement. You should see this in blue, and it should be something under 30 feet. And this little circle around my crosshair should also be blue. Uh, for GPS accuracy to meet that accuracy. But what I'm going to do is just kind of pull away from that. And remember, we wanted to draw out this little area. And what I'm going to start doing is drawing that area first. Before I start on the data form, I want to just get that area drawn and feel good about it. And this is what you want to take care with. So I'm going to hope I'm going to walk to there where the crosshairs brought me. I'm going to add the first point. And then I'm going to just imagine me walking, you know, I'm holding my device and I'm walking to the next corner, add point. And I'm just going to keep going, walking around that perimeter, add point. And when I add this point, I'm going to get that green check. And you can see it's sort of guessed on, an, on closing the area. And that's good, and I'm happy with that. So I don't even have to go return to the first point. Field Maps recognizes that I have enclosed a polygon of some sort. If I needed to, I could adjust it out. You can see I can add a little point over here and keep going. But this is actually the area I want. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. Now, the data form itself again has, as you can see, required fields and a non-required field right at the start. This one does not have that asterisk. So I'm just going to go ahead and follow the directions, first and last name, Jenny Sauer. Done. I'm going to leave the agency. Now, here's the, here's the one I was mixed up on that, um, that gives you that little contingent value. So you guys will make lots of use of this. The application method here, Again, you've got all these options and they really tried to combine options that might be most common. So look for the one that makes the most sense for you. And then this option of scraped, if I choose scraped, have a look at this chemical details before I choose the next one. We've got um, active chemical brand name. If I choose an active ingredient, none, you see it reduced the rest of those questions. So if these options of scraped and non scraped are chosen, you have less questions. If I choose something else like soybean oil, those questions remain. 
So that's a little contingent value there that is kind of handy, reduces the questions you have to answer if they just don't apply. And then just walking through this, Again, please excuse the total lack of knowledge of your survey protocol here. I'm just going to plug in some numbers. They don't have to make sense to me. We just want to satisfy the form in this case. And let's see, is that all for required? No, the last required field I see here is this treatment start date and time. And I'm actually going to leave it blank and go ahead and hit submit because I want to show you what happens there. You can see we get a message right away. It's you're not able to submit. So this submit button will fail you for for any missing fields that were required. And it's going to kind of give you a hint at, at what that is. It says one attribute field uh, failed, and it's referring to a field. You can hit view, and it's going to kind of move it to the middle. So you get like no excuse. It's not off at the edge anywhere. And we got this little messaging that says required in red. So now we know what field needs our attention. I'm going to go ahead and enter the date. In this case, we have a date and a time. And it's time stamping for this is 1143 in mountain time. That's where I am. So it will time stamp for your devices settings. So perhaps this is incorrect and you might want to make special give it special attention. If I hit today, it's going to timestamp for today and the devices clock. And if I need to change that, I can just go ahead and tap this time and I'll get a little wheel that lets me do that. So I'm going to adjust it to Eastern time, should be 1.43 PM, right? And then I just tap that again to close it. So be careful with the time if, if that's important. Uh, make sure that you can adjust that accordingly or change the clock on your device itself. And once you're happy with it, again, this is my, my thing. Close it up so that you don't accidentally change anything there. And treatment comments, I'm going to add test. I, I like to make sure there's no misunderstanding about these points that I'm adding. And I feel really good about everything. I check over my data form, and I'm going to hit submit. Again, while selected, we have the option to edit. And I'm going to select a different area just so that you can see what that looks like just by tapping. We get that blue kind of halo around it. And then we have the pencil, or we can scroll up and edit. And then all those fields become something we can make changes to and then hit submit. So I'm not going to make any changes, but you get the gist. Just to show you what that looks like from the iPhone. I'm going to set this down. I've opened field maps on my iPhone, and it's doing the same thing as it did on the iPad. It's moving into the last map that I used. I'm going to back out here. I can see that I have offline areas in this training egg mass treatment map. I'm going to open that and look for my offline area. Here's the offline area I renamed. If I want to, I can create another offline area using the main online map with those three dots. You can see it all looks the same, it's just small. Um, so I can open that offline area. I know it's offline because I've got that sync button up here that's telling me that it's gotta get synced, it's gonna live in my device. All I have to do is hit that plus button. Um, if I were to sync that data from my iPad, I would also here be seeing that point we added together over here, if you recall. Right now, I don't see that. And so that's one reason why we recommend frequent syncing. At the end of the day, every day is a, is a really good recommendation. And then the next day, your maps in, in other devices and all your colleagues get to see those things that you've added. So that's how that looks. If I open the data form here, it does take up some of the room. You can move the data form up to take up the full screen and have a little more space to see what you're doing. If you need to check the map, you can kind of pull down and go between, which is kind of helpful. So just wanted to show you that view. It really is the same. You're on a smaller screen. You can kind of you know toggle between seeing the map and the data form as needed. So that is the AGMAS treatment areas. A few things, some reminders that I want to go over with you is just remember that difference between the official map and the training map. Just be careful over the next couple of days that you are not putting any real data in a training map and that you're not playing or adding, you know, pretend data in an official map. Use that disconnected data collection workflow. 
and please sync your data daily. It kind of keeps a lot of systems in place, monitoring, reporting. There's a lot of things that feed that that data feeds into to be consumed. Remember that two step first data entry in the monitor points layer, if that's something your state is using. And be careful with your data collection. It's not meant to be, um, you know, in your face, but just take extra care. Take that extra moment to check over that data form one more time. And I know it's saved me a million times just to do that one more time. There is also a site plans layer that may be added to some of your maps depending on your state's needs. And so um, just want to mention that and, and, and let you know that those could be there to help you make decisions. If the submit button fails, remember, you might be missing a field. It could also be have to do with GPS accuracy. And that markup layer, remember the two rules that you should be really careful with. Number one, it's not an official data layer. And also number two, it is really just private to your device. So just remember those two things when you're using that markup layer. Getting help. I've talked about a lot today and sometimes things go wrong that you just don't expect or maybe, you know, maybe you just forgot how something works. It can be really simple. Um, we've got a list of folks here ready to help you. As far as this survey protocol, you've got Matthew Travis, your multi-state coordinator, and Erica Wiley, the SLF data coordinator. If it's an issue with an iPad or in, your, in many of your cases, iPhone, those are both supported by CECIT. So go to them with issues that you have and get those corrected. Access to the portal or access to the map itself or trouble with the field maps application working correctly. Obviously start with your supervisor, but you also have a local field GIS specialist supporting your area that can provide some support. And then we have an email, the webgis.connect at usda.gov being answered and responded to by a group of portal managers. So if you really find yourself in, in a need that can't be sorted quickly, it's a great um, resource for you to go to. Anything training related, uh, remember that mobile data collection tools web page. You can also come to end user tools and myself for support on those needs. If you have a request for further training, go to Matt Travis and request that as this, the multi-state coordinator or talk to Erica about those needs. So we've flown through quite a list here. Uh, we talked about the app itself. We talked showed signing in to that app. We talked, we really harped on that disconnected workflow, I hope. Um, we talked about the two layers, the activity table associated with that monitor points layer. We went over some editing techniques and we looked at the data forms and some of the things that they're capable of. And we just went through a list of reminders and some um, kind of warnings for you all. And so we've really covered a lot here today. Um, probably a good time to let you know that you should please test yourself. Don't forget that quiz. Go ahead and take advantage of that to make sure that you got what you needed from today's um, lesson, I guess. <laughs> um, but please, just a little reminder to take that quiz. And finally, I'm going to pause and just say, um, I've covered a lot today, and you have a lot of resources at your fingertips. But if for any reason you need to reach out to me, I'm also here to maybe direct you to the right person or maybe answer the question myself, but happy to be here for you and answer those kinds of things. Um, I'm just going to pause and see if Erica, if you had anything you wanted to add or if there is anything that you would like me to speak or show further. That was great, Jenny. Thank you so much. Um, just to touch on something that came up in the last training, um, it was like the number one question. Um, as everyone knows in the property assessment maps, we have the treatment areas with the related table where you kind of put all that chemical detail um, associated with that treatment um, in that table. Um, th it is not on the egg mass treatment. So like that workflow is just a little bit different. If you go, let's say you go there today and you just scraped egg masses in, a, in that area and then you plan on going back tomorrow to do treatments um, with golden pest oil. You're gonna go ahead and either draw another polygon with the date um, and whatever that activity is that you did. So if you do put that gypso down that tomorrow, 
um, you're just going to draw another point, another polygon. Um, so I just want to make that very clear that it's not like the treatment areas that you're used to that we um, deployed this year. It is still just one single plot, no related table. Thank you, Erica. Are there any other questions or concerns or thoughts at this point from you all? Wow, what a nice little group. Where did you say to get help getting maps added? I'm going to go back to the getting help page because that's a good one. Thank you, Charlotte, for bringing that up. That's a good one to leave um, leave on a little longer. You should go to your supervisor. Um, your supervisor or the SPUD should request that. And actually, even I can help with that, but that should be approved by the supervisor. Not that you don't have the right to it um, or that obviously you should have access, but we like to do it that way. It's sensitive data and we make sure the right people are getting access to the right maps. So have your supervisor submit the request to the end user tools group. Um, really, your supervisor could go through any of these bullets underneath as well. They could go to the GIS specialist or they could email that request to make sure you have access to the maps you needed. Um, so that's a great question, Charlotte. Thank you for asking that. And where can you get the recording, Curtis? That's a good one too. And I don't mind saying it a hundred times. I'll show you the mobile data collection website. The top half is really about uh, documents. The bottom half is your video gallery. So you're going to have to give me at least a week because um, <laughs> I have to go through lots of processes to get them up here. They have to be, um, you know, kind of cleaned up a little bit, submitted to the APHIS YouTube um, channel, and then embedded on this website. But this is right where videos appear for training. Thanks, Curtis. I'm always happy to share that. You guys have been just a great audience and I just respect you so much for being here and participating in this way and making sure that you are responsible data collectors out there just taking care of SLF and um, so I count it as a privilege to be able to try to help um, so so I'm very sincere in in my um, offer to to be open to questions as well. I know you have those at your disposal that probably can answer them more quickly, but you are very welcome to reach out to me at any time. So uh, what I'm gonna do is let you go. Um, I'm always happy to end a little tiny bit early and give you those five extra minutes back, um, but hopefully this has covered a lot and the video itself is a great reference and just good luck out there and thank you for being here. <laughs>